Good afternoon, everybody. Rusty Blackwood here, and I welcome you once again to my loft. It is the early afternoon of April the 3rd, 2023. And, um, you know, for timekeeping's sake, if uh, I need to look back and see when I made this. And uh, I just wanted to come by for a short, short uh, catch up here and an update on my upcoming Return to Autumn Part 2. Um, I finished revision on, uh, when was it? On, well, I, re I finished my actual new revision just this past Sunday and sent it back to Don um, for him to do his thing. And we had decided uh, midweek, last week, that um, I was I was just going to go back to my original manuscript and just do a, a new revision on that and um, and submit that. I had found as I was working with the um, PDF that will become the book that it is is put into the actual book. Um, I was finding um, some discrepancies and uh, and some mistakes, of course, and uh, and um, and in order to change it, it was it was sort of difficult with the PDF because it would have meant that um, Don would have had to put a lot of extra time into doing that, and uh, and he's already putting enough time into it as as it is and um, and so I started to kind of feel a little bad about that and um, because I was as I say when I was when I was going through the PDF and revision I was finding some things that I needed changed and uh, and I had a, a separate document where I would put the corrections on there as well as the PDF and uh, and sent that back so that Don could find exactly, you know, the page number, the number of the on the on the PDF, and the chapter and the chapter title and so on and so on, the paragraph and where this is. Even though it's all marked right on the PDF on a working PDF, um, you use the tools of the PDF, and you can highlight and click the comment box on the highlighted area to put your directions in there of, of what needs to be done. And so this is what I was doing, but um, when he was submitting this to the program that, that he has that produces the actual book, it, it wouldn't accept certain, certain um, oh, how would I say, um, not grammatical, but um, where there needed to be um, a quotation mark changed because on the PDF it was showing as if it was italicized and in reality it wasn't, but his program wasn't recognizing that and wouldn't change it. So it, it was, which to me, should have because any any program is you is programmed to do what it's set up to do and um, so I figured well why don't I just go back to the nitty-gritty and I'll go back to my actual manuscript and I will revise the total manuscript and make my changes and um, change some phrasing that when I was reading it in the PDF um, I was thinking no I think I can rephrase that better so this was part of the reason why going back to the original manuscript I could do it there and then resubmit that and then that can be then put into his program as though it's sort of starting from the beginning I guess and let the program do its thing and change this to the PDF that will then come back to me 
and um, everything should be fine this time. And, um, and I will read it again in a revision and just make sure and then it's I can sign off on it. It's good to go then to become the book. And, um, but, uh, you know, I'm not concerned about it because this was part of the reason why I had pushed the release of this book well into April because that way it would allow uh, what, what has just happened. And um, because I figured there will be, there will be something that will need extra attention. There always is, I don't care how thorough um, an author is with their manuscript before it's submitted, there is going to be issues. You're going to find some mistakes. And um, so, I mean, this is the reason behind revision. And so, um, you know, I'm very used to this. It doesn't bother me. and. Um, I'm sure maybe it bothers my producer because, you know, he's looking at, he's looking at the timeline and, uh, and the release date and everything. And because I'm not his only client, um, he has other authors that, that he, he, um, helps with their work as well. And, um, and so like I'm one of, I'm one of quite, quite a few. And so, uh, and I think he's probably thinking in order to give me proper attention the way um, he should that um, the longer it takes, the, the closer you're pushing your deadline before you actually get your book out. And so, but you know, I'm not fretting, not stressing about this. I've been through this enough to, to know the ins and outs and the steps and um, and that you know so you find you find issues you know you correct the issues this is this is what the the preparation for a, for a book is all about and why you do it and so you know there can always be something come out that um, when the book comes out that you can find like after the fact that oh you know well there's a mistake type of thing. And, and I've said this, and I've said this to my producer, that um, I have read books, published books from the big five publishing houses and um, that are supposedly edited up the yin-yang and still find mistakes. And so um, the sooner you learn to accept that, the better you are, you are, you know, because otherwise, <laughs> heavens, you'd, you, you would never get to the finish line, um, if if you let every little thing bother you um, and say, oh no, that it can't go. I'm not going to release that because that that's wrong, or um, I could phrase that better. I mean, you could, you could go through a manuscript 200 times and still find something that you would feel as the author that I could, I could phrase that better. I could, um, I could um, come up with a, an entirely different concept altogether in the way I, I want to present this and what I want to say. But if you do that, you just, you will never, never be satisfied and you will never get your work out there. And um, sooner or later, you know, a little bird's got to learn to fly and leave the nest and when it does, it either flies or it doesn't. And so, um, so that's what's going on. And I wanted to do a quick check in here and do an update and let you know, because I had said that I, I would keep my readers posted on, um, <clears throat> what's going on and the, the progression of it. 
And uh, so, so that's that. And um, Easter is this coming weekend. I will be back later this week, I think probably Thursday. Um, I don't particularly like to do videos, <coughs> excuse me, on um, Good Friday. And, uh, but it may turn out to be Good Friday that, uh, that I end up doing the video. I, I will just have to see. Because I've got other things, other things on the, my plate this coming week that I have to do. And so I will, I will just leave it open that way that it will either be Thursday or Good Friday that I will do my Easter video and um, celebrate his new birth and um, and so uh, I'm I'm planning um, a dinner for my family um, and I'm planning it on Saturday and uh, hopefully that will work out well for everybody I have my doubts that all of my family <coughs> will be present but you know all you can do is you know choose a date that you're going to have your dinner. Let everybody know and hope that whoever can come will come. And uh, because, you know, when you have members of your family that um, are married or involved with somebody, there's another side of a family that is also um, has to be taken into consideration. And, and they plan their events and, um, and my family members, of course, that are in that situation, uh, have to go to the other side as well. And so, um, but I am going to choose Saturday and because uh, it's going to work out best. I know to begin with that um, my eldest daughter, my eldest um, granddaughter, uh, her husband's grandmother always holds Easter her Easter dinner on Easter Sunday and so um, and so since Carson and Garrett have been married even prior when they were when they were going together and then became engaged um, um, I knew that Marianne did that and uh, so I've always you know chosen a different day to have mine and um, and so uh, so that's what I'm looking at and uh, and and I love Easter I, I find Easter is a uh, well because of what Easter stands for first and foremost um, that in itself is the biggest celebration of all but to see everything being renewed um, everything is starting to grow and uh, buds are starting to come and I have my daffodils are up about oh so far now they're not blooming yet but they're up, up about this far and uh, and I have flowers in my my back garden I don't know um, the horticultural name for them but I've always called them snowbells they're they're pure white, the flowers are white, and of course the foliage is green, and they're up, oh, they're up about like this, and each year they continue to thicken and spread, and uh, they're great ground cover, and, and, uh, and so they're, they're doing very well. Here, a week ago when we had that snow come blasting through here, um, and was sticking to everything and it was there for about a day. I looked out in the poor <laughs> over the gardens at the back the, these poor snowbells they were just flattened right out. It was I thought oh my I hope everything is going to be fine but I mean plants that grow extremely early in the season um, there are some that even grow when the snow is right on the ground yet. Um, they're 
strong and resilient and they can take that and I figured that these snow bells would <laughs> come back <laughs> and um, so after the snow um, was gone they were still <laughs> laying down there pretty lazy but it wasn't long and I, I realized they're coming up and they're you know and they're they're standing up again and they're fine and um, and so uh, my lavender did not survive the winter um, so I'm going to have to get a new lavender plant this year and I'm, I'm limited on what well, got hair here that's bothering me here um, I'm limited on space of, of just what all I can have I mean if I had endless areas of, of yard um, heaven sakes I, I could have all kinds of variety back there but my my yard is very shaded in the summer my backyard and uh, so I have to stick to plants that that thrive better in shaded areas and um, to put anything out that requires direct Sun um, at least near the back of, of the garden more forward towards the house that's different because it does get Sun but um, back further, no, it's, it's all shaded, it's very shady, and, and I wouldn't say dark, but because, I mean, the light filters through the, through the trees, but through the leaves and that, but for plants that require a lot of sunshine and direct sunshine, um, they're not going to get it in, in the back part of my backyard, about halfway and back. It, that's um, it's pretty shady and so um, so I'm gonna get going here I just as I say at the beginning I wanted to come by and and do a quick update and uh, let y'all know what's going on with return to autumn 2 and um, and I'm looking for toward probably mid-April to late April in in there I'm not going to give a day a date um, because if you do that you're held to that that date and um, and I mean things have to be uploaded this is this is going to be available on Amazon all Amazons in um, paperback hardback and Kindle and it takes time to get each format um, done and, and uploaded and, and there and available for everybody. And so if you give a, a, an actual date that um, it's going to be available and it's not available on that date, that doesn't look well on me. That's not very professional. So, so I'm just going to give you sort of like a time frame and, um, and it, then it will be available. And I must say, too, that I was... Um, I was very I'm sad because the uh, when I got to the end of the manuscript of um, Return to Autumn 2 um, in fact I even had a cry because um, uh, well I'm not going to tell you what happens but um, it, it, uh, as it as the creator of this story um, it, it, it did affect me. It made me very sad. And, uh, because these characters uh, have lived in my head for a long time now. And, uh, and to say goodbye to a, a story that, I mean, I can read the books myself anytime I want, but it's a little different than when you're actually creating them and uh, and when you get to the end of the story um, and you know this is this is it um, it it's it's a downer and uh, and I, I was feeling very low and and blue because to me it, it, it's the end of something that is very 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 special to me right here in my heart it's these characters um, especially Cyril Landon 
Um, I've often said if, if any of my characters could actually exist in my life, Cyril would be one that um, I would love to know, I, I would love to be with. Um, I guess maybe he is my perfect man, perfect mate, I, I don't know. But um, it, it's just to say, well, I, I will never say goodbye. These characters, all of my characters that I, in all of my different books that I've written, um, they're all, they all live in my head. And, uh, but once you write about them and they're done their time in the story that, they live in um, and then you you know move on to something else and create new characters and, and new storylines and, and things to get them involved in um, it uh, then it begins all again you become you become attached to to these characters and uh, and so um, for some people listening, they probably think like, oh well, um, must be nice to live, <laughs> live in a bubble, <laughs> but no, that, that's not what's, what happens. It's just that these characters become real to the author. And, well, they are real to the author because it's, they come from the author's imagination. And, um, and for the period of time that they exist while you're writing them until you publish the book that they live in. Um, you spend a, an awful lot of time with these characters and um, and it's just like having to leave very dear friends that um, you know you can pick up the book and read about but it's different I don't know how to explain that to, to make it um, legible or understandable but um, and so I, I am so hoping that uh, everybody when they get to the end of Return to Autumn Part 2 which ends that is where the story concludes um, throughout that book. Uh, and uh, I hope that you will think about the journey you've taken beginning in The Perils of Autumn and then return to Autumn Part 1 and then return to Autumn Part 2. Um, and maybe help let it help you think about maybe something in your own life that meant a lot to you or that you where you haven't been for a very long time people you haven't seen for a very long time um, and if at all possible get in touch with them and because uh, it is so sad to lose touch with people that are so dear to you and um, and in, in in today's world with the internet there's really no reason to lose touch and in at least entirely because you can um, you can find people and uh, and you know and there's always a telephone if you if you have their number or you can hopefully get your number get their number but um, but anyway, enough of enough of memory lane uh, as I oftentimes like to travel down. So I'm going to say bye bye for now, so I can get this uploaded and to YouTube. And um, takes a while to upload it, and it has to go through its process into high definition, and um, which I think is great. I, I love this new HD camera I've had for a very long time, 
it's just so much nicer and crisper and everything from the my my very first videos that I started doing because it was just a, a built the built-in webcam that's on on my laptop here and um, and so uh, I uh, decided that I was going to get an HD camera and, and uh, that's what I did and and um, it's uploaded to my desktop that's where I do most of my work but I like using my laptop here when I'm doing videos because it's portable and I can take it wherever I want for my sets or take it outside once it gets a little bit warmer it's just not quite warm enough it's a beautiful day here today it's nice and sunny but the air is is still the, there's a cool wind blowing and um, and I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sit out in that and so uh, you know that I'll get to that soon enough it will be nice to be able to go out and sit and so enjoy the your afternoon wherever you are or your evening if you're already there or your morning if you haven't gotten to afternoon yet and um, and I'll be back later this week with my Easter video for y'all and so. Um, I'll see you then. God's blessings to each of you. You stay well and stand tall. Bye-bye.